Did you know that God wrote a book about you? That's right. The Bible tells us that God wrote a book about you. You know, I discovered this several years ago when I was having prayer meetings. And these prayer meetings were every Saturday night for three hours. It was a group of us that got together every Saturday night and we prayed in the same room for three hours. And we did this for two and a half years. And toward the end of that two and a half years, one night I was laying on the floor behind a couch and uh, in the prayer meeting, and I was laying down, and I thought, oh, you know what, I want to get up. And I couldn't lift my head off the carpet. And I thought, I don't remember being this tired when I came in tonight. And then I realized that all my strength had gone out of me and that the presence of God had come upon me. And the next thing I know, I was caught up out of my body, and I was in a library, and I was standing between two rows of books. And as I looked at the books, they were very old books, uh, thick books made out of leather, and they were covered with a thick layer of dust. And the Holy Spirit said to me, this is the library of heaven. And I'm like, this is the library of heaven? He said, yes. And every one of these books represents my will for a city on the earth. And while I'm, he said this, I see a hand go up in front of me and begin to take hold of one of the books and pull it off the shelf and the book fell open and so on. And then I had to change to another scene and the next thing I know it's back in my body. And so I didn't know what to do with that. And so I thought, what are there books? You know, I know that there's the Lamb books of, Lamb's Book of Life and if your name's written in it, that's a good thing. And if it's not, that's a very bad thing. But are there other books? And I so I began to search the Bible. I found in Revelation that at the end, there's a day when we're going to stand before the throne of God, and it says, and the books shall be opened. Well, I began to understand that there are, God has predetermined his will for our life, and he's written it down. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says, for you are, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That means that God predestined certain things for you and I to do. But the thing I learned from this encounter, which was, I know I've had very few of these out of body, I had hardly any out of body experiences. But what I learned from this encounter is that prayer has everything to do with opening up God's destiny for your life. And so here I want to get into that, but let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit because I want to show you how you can open God's destiny, book of destiny for your life. So let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're here with us right now and you're going to lead us and guide us into truth. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you and we ask you to speak to us through the word of God. Open our eyes to see, our hearts to understand and our minds to comprehend what it is that you're saying to us, that we can incorporate it into action in our life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you say amen to that? Well, Psalms 139, maybe you have read it or you haven't, but verse 16 says this. God, David is speaking to God. He says, you saw, my eyes saw your, uh, God is speaking to David, let's put it that way. Your eyes saw my unfor unformed substance or body, all the days that were ordained, ordained for me were written in your book before there was one of them came to be. Another version says this, Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days of my life were written before they ever took shape, when as yet there was none of them. So in other words, God wrote a book about us. And the fact is that he put his will in that book for our lives. Now, you know, here's the thing. I don't believe that God's will is automatic. I believe there are certain things that we have to do to cooperate. One would be to be yielded to God, to be submitted to God. But the thing I discovered that, uh, that from that experience was that prayer has everything to do with seeing God's will or God's plan that he's written before the foundation. And listen, God's plan is a good plan. Uh, it tells us in Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 13, he said, God says this. This, this is the New uh, International Version. It says this, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Now notice the next words. Then you will call upon me and come to pray to me, and I will listen to you, and I will 
you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And so what is he saying there? He's saying, I know the plan I have for you. It's a good plan. It's a plan to give you a hope and a future. It's a plan, one version says, to prosper you and bring you into your in intended end. And so here it is. But the key is, then you will call upon me. In other words, you have to pray. As you pray, what you are doing is you're opening up God's plan, the book that was written about you. And you know what I found? As I began to just every day, I, began, I went from Saturday night prayer for three hours to every day prayer, six o'clock in the morning, just calling upon the Lord saying, Lord, I want your kingdom to come, your will to be done in my life. Now, you know that Jesus actually says that he fulfilled the book that was written about him. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, it says this, then I said, this is Jesus speaking, Behold, I have come in the scroll of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. So Jesus is even saying that everything he did was the fulfillment of something that was pre-written, predetermined before he was ever born. And in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, it tells us this. It says, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold or take hold of eternal life to which you were called. In other words, we are to by faith in prayer, praying in faith, praying the prayers of faith. As we do that, we are laying hold of God's plan for our life. And of course, when the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray, what did he say? He says, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now listen to the next words. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So are you getting this? So God has a book that he's written about you and me, about your family, about you know your city. And But what God's doing is he's waiting. He can't open the book until he has your prayers agreeing with what he wants done on earth as it is in heaven. In James chapter 5, verse 16, it says this, The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man or woman makes tremendous power available and it's working. So God has this plan, but it can't happen until you begin to pray. Well, how do I start praying? Just start saying, God, I don't know how to pray, but I want to release, I want to open the book that you've written about me, about my family, about my marriage, about my kids. You can intercede for others that their book begins to be opened. And what happens is, you know, after I began to learn this and grow in this, all of a sudden, God's destiny, I can now, I'm now speaking like, you know, 54 years later uh, in, in my life of being with Jesus and can tell you I've been in 40 different, 41 different countries of the world. I've preached the gospel in many nations. I've done things I never dreamed I would do. I've been places I never dreamed I would be all the, because I was praying and releasing what was in God's book that he wrote about me in Psalms 139. I was releasing his will in my life, in my family, in my kids, and so on. Now, there's another verse in Isaiah 30, verse 18 and 19. It says, Therefore, the Lord longs to be gracious to you, and therefore he waits on high to have compassion on you, for God is a God of justice. So what does that mean? God has already determined things he wants you to do and accomplish, but he's waiting for you. He's waiting for me. What is he waiting for? It says he's a God of justice. He has to have a justified reason to do what he wants to do. Then here he gives the answer. This is Isaiah 30, verses 18 and 19. It says this, How blessed are all those who long for him. O people in Zion, inhabitant in Jerusalem, you will weep no longer. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. So prayer is giving God the justified reason to release his will for your life. Can I tell you, there's nothing better than the will of God. No matter what kind of plan you have for your life, God's plan is better. And the Bible's clear. God has a plan for your life. It's a good plan. It's life and life more abundantly. And so, and Paul writes, as, as a matter of fact, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, he says this. He says, he says, here's what I'm praying for you. He says, I'm praying this, that you would be filled with the knowledge of his will, with spiritual wisdom and understanding. So again, 
God has written a book about you. Don't miss out on anything in the book. Don't come to the end of your life and you find out when you stand before the throne of God and, and it says the books will be opened, that there was a whole bunch of stuff that you could have had happen in your life, but it never happened because you never took the time to pray. Well, let me pray for you that you really lay hold of this and you begin to say, God, I want your kingdom to come. I want your will to be done in my life. I pray, release and open the book that you have for my life. Release the plans that you have for me. So let me pray for you. God, I pray for everyone that's going to watch this video that they will begin to say, God, I'm going to, I'm going to seek you with all my heart. I'm going to submit to you. I'm going to call upon you. I'm going to believe in you that you have a plan for my life. And I ask you to release that plan in the name of Jesus amen and amen. Well, I hope this is encouraging for you. Hey, I want you to know that the Father loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.